Okay, we're going to, to begin with our final presentation of this first day of the 2015 Foiling Week. And uh, we have with us uh, Friso Bergsma from the Netherlands, who is a naval architect for the company Van Ossenen. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah, that's pretty good. Based in the Netherlands, uh, working on the development of uh, hydrofoils and uh, CFD tools. Uh, Van Ossenen, the company, work on a range of yachts, including uh, race yachts. Cruising, production yachts, super yachts, and traditional uh, Dutch sailing yachts. So, pretty broad range spectrum. So, I'd like to hand you over to uh, Friso. Thank you very much. Um, when Luca called me initially, can you arrange the screen? This is not <coughs> my presentation. Um, when Luca called me initially, um, he asked me to do a presentation about a uh, hydrofoil which was developed at Van Ossanen, uh, which is being mounted uh, aft of uh, motor vessels. Uh, which is actually quite interesting development at Van Ossanen. But I thought we have maybe a more interesting development as well. And that's about uh, a CFD method, uh, computational fluid dynamics method, to simulate the transition of a hydrofoiling vessel um, from, uh, well, displacement mode from non-foiling mode to foiling mode. So this presentation will contain of two parts. That's first uh, the... Um, pre uh, an introduction of this hydrofoil, the hull vein we call it, and then a presentation, a part about the um, CFD simulation of a transition to foiling mode. Uh, to start, we'll introduce uh, the company Van Ossanen, because I don't know if you're all familiar with Van Ossanen, uh, Nave Architects. It was originally founded by Piet Van Ossanen. He was involved in several uh, America's Cup projects. Uh, we're in Wageningen in the Netherlands, um, and we're currently consists of 14 people and we do a bit of consultancy, a bit of CFD, sailing yacht design and motor yacht design. Um, well, as told, we originated from uh, what well, design of sailing yachts. Uh, we're involved in some America's Cup projects. We're um, heavily involved now in the design of uh, Lamster Agas, they're called there. Um, uh, highly competitive sailing vessels which are uh, required to fulfill uh, strict traditionality uh, rules. That's why they don't look fast, but within their class, these are uh, very competitive and high performing vessels. And some other yachts, also motor yachts, uh, we divert to. We work a lot with CFD, um, a method to simulate the flow around foils. Um, and we use it in the de our design process, in our improvement process. And that's what we also use for giving design advice to other companies. Then the whole vein. Um, in short, it's a fixed foil behind the transom of the vessel. Here we can see uh, the tip of the foil. It was uh, applied to Arriva, uh, Le Défi, America's Cup competitor in 2003, if I recall correctly. And here we see it um, on a motor vessel where it was applied in 2014. Eventually, didn't uh, wasn't used in the America's Cup uh, version that actually competed, but it was uh, considered in the early design stage, and there it reduced the resistance by uh, five percent, which is uh, quite considerable for America's Cup, uh, I guess. Um, for motor yachts, we have, we have been working on we can achieve about twenty-five percent of resistance reduction with this foil. Um, how do we do this? It provides a forward thrust. Um, because the foil generates lift, which can be, which will be directed upwards, but also partially forward. It corrects the trim, uh, lifting the transom of the vessel, uh, reducing resistance. Um, and this product is developed by a sister uh, company of Van Ossan called Hulfein BV. So, this presentation. Um, first, a bit about the development of this Hulfein uh, and how it works. Then I'll go to, on, on to the second part, and that's the CFD of the transition to foiling mode, where I will discuss the CFD method, which we use to do this simulation, the control strategy, and the results. So the development process to the right, the Arriva, uh, you've seen uh, the pictures in the, some previous slides. This is actually the left figure shows a um, ferry for which it was applied uh, the first time. This vessel had a tremendous issue with uh, trim. It was leaning backwards a lot, and Piet van der Sanen developed this foil. 
um, correcting the trim, reducing resistance substantially. Um, our client was really happy with this, and P thought, okay, this is a way to reduce uh, resistance, to improve performance, and that's uh, where, well, things started rolling, and this development uh, took on. So we did several studies to various vessels, uh, not only motor yachts, but also cargo vessels, some marine vessels, and found in most cases a resistance reduction. And then in 2014, it really got a boost when we launched two vessels to the right, a 42 meter yacht, for which we found 25% of resistance reduction, and to the left, uh, a supply vessel that's used to bring crew to oil rigs and stuff. And for this one, we found 15% of resistance reduction. So that's quite nice, actually. Um, but <coughs> this foil works with four principles thrust force, which it generates because there's an upward flow near the transom of the vessel. This flow passes the foil, brings forward thrust, and basically reduce your resistance of the vessel in this way. Um, a trim correction uh, that reduces the waves uh, in the aft of the vessel and also it reduces the motion of the vessel in the waves, make it more comfortable and also reducing resistance due to waves. This is uh, short, show, uh, show shortly the working principle with a force that's being generated, giving a component upwards and also giving a component forward. It uh, reduces the, the, the waves because it sucks down basically the waves, reducing re uh, wave resistance. And here we see also the wave pattern. To the top, we see the wave pattern for the um, vessel without a hull vane, and to the bottom we see the wave pattern for the vessel with a hull vane. And then uh, here it will show you hopefully video. Okay, uh, no video today. Um, to the left, we have the vessel without hull vane. To the right, we have the vessel with hull vane. And as we can see from these signals, <coughs> the motions in waves are uh, reduced, the trim is corrected, and the uh, um, resistance is also reduced. So that's uh, an, uh, one of, uh, the fourth benefit, basically, of this hull vane. Um, as you can see, most of the development of this a hull vane was done using computational fluid dynamics. Um, we're using a uh, fine marine, a package that is widely used, also by um, America's Cup design teams. I think Bobby also uses it. Um, and uh, the, these values were compared with tone tank tests, so we are quite confident about the results. And we developed further methods with this CFD software and one of them was uh, or is the um, transition of a vessel uh, from displacement mode to foiling mode. Um, I don't have to introduce you uh, foiling because we are here all for the same cause, so we'll skip that a bit. What I will introduce to you is um, the class we worked on. It's a, a solar powered vessel which is being raised in the Netherlands and in uh, other parts of the world as well. It's purely powered by solar energy um, and to improve performance, speed, reduce resistance. Um, most teams develop vessels that come out of the water, um, use several uh, foils, uh, a wand for uh, right height control. This race takes place in the northern part of the Netherlands. It's uh, several legs um, of 40 k a day. And this is what the design looks like where we're going to be considering. There's a large surface area to accommodate all the solar panels. It has two uh, wide foil forward with two struts, which carries about two thirds of the load of the vessel. One foil aft, which carries one third of the load. The total vessel, including drive for weights, about 200 kilograms. <coughs> and we used the computational fluid dynamics method to simulate its motions. Um, 
some technical details for those who are interested. What's in, uh, definitely good to know is that the vessel is free to trim arise. So in the sim simulation, it's allowed to come out of the water to trim fore and aft. Um, well, it's because we want to simulate the transition. Um, we use sliding grids, so uh, I will introduce those to you later on, and adaptive grid refinement. Sliding grids. This is necessary because here we have the strut with here the foil. It's a bit blurry uh, because uh, there's a lot of uh, cells in this area. Um, these sliding grids allow the foils uh, to rotate. So depending on the position of the vessel, the, the foils will uh, have a large angle of attack or a small angle of attack. Um, this method has been used before for other applications. Um, then the second thing we used was adaptive grid refinement because this vessel is coming out of the water and we need a lot of small uh, cells in which we compute the flow near the free surface. Um, these cells need to move relative to the vessel downwards. So what do we do? Um, we check where the, the free surface, the water surface is. Then as the vessel rises out of the water, this, the refined cells are being refined in this area, for example, which I will show on the next slide. So here we see that the free surface is, because the vessel is now in foiling mode, is lowered relative to the vessel, showing uh, the refined cells lower. Then a control strategy. Um, maybe not all of you are aware, but this is a description of control uh, strategy for, for example, um, a foiling moth, but also for uh, the vessels um, I, I was considering in the CFD computation. Here's your rise, your level above the water. This is compared to the desired ride height. This gives, in most of the cases, an error. Then, if this error uh, is magnified, giving you a foil pitch angle. Um, because um, <coughs> this given foil pitch angle um, might not give your desired ride height. There's a cumulative uh, error that means that the error of the past time is added and this is also magnified to increase your foil angle. That's basically what you do when you adjust the, uh, well, you, the relation between your wand and the um, foil angle on a foiling moth. What does this result to? And how would be really nice if we do have a video. Oh, check if I have it on the USB stick. So here we have an overview image of the vessel rising out of the water, a detail of the strut with a nacelle to improve the flow and the angle that the foil is making. And here in uh, poor resolution, the um, right height, the um, angle of both foils and the force in set direction, in upward direction on each body. We'll show it one more time. So here we can see it's still in displacement mode, coming out of the water, and the foils are adjusted to go to the target right height that we desired. Here we have the rise of the vessel, of the, the boat coming out of the water. It starts at a level of zero. We set the target right height of uh, about 25 centimeters. And it, with a small overshoot, which was shown in the presentation of Will as well, it gets to a uh, desired right height. To achieve this right height, the trim angle of one of the foils follows this path. So <coughs> it's uh, in, this, in the beginning, the error 
is big, um, but the accumulated error over time is still small, so it increases to a uh, quite a high uh, angle of attack for the foil. And as the error gets smaller, the foil reaches a steady angle of attack of about half a degree. <coughs> this is the error on the rise. Also here we see uh, it starts at 25 centimeters, um, goes down, it has a big overshoot, and then um, converges to an error of almost zero. <coughs> here showing the pitch angles of the forward foil and the aft foil and then the lifting force, which means that in the beginning, most of the force is carried by the hull, basically, and as the speed increases, um, it's lifted out of the water, bringing more force to the forward foils and to the aft foils with a nice distribution, as predicted, of about two-thirds for the forward foils and one-third for the aft foil. So that brings us almost to the end of the presentation. Um, Hulvane, which we treated in the first half of this presentation, it, uh, is not foiling, but it definitely reduces your resistance by using a foil. Then, the simulation of transition to foiling mode using CFD with a control strategy for the foils. Next steps would be, for example, to find an optimal control strategy or a nice way to transit from um, displacement mode to foiling mode. How can we do this uh, as smooth as possible? How can we react to, for example, disturbances such as waves, uh, if necessary? Um, that's all methods that which, or all studies which can be done in the future with this method. But I think it would be quite interesting to proceed in this way and currently present the method as a way uh, to do so. And with that, what I would like to conclude. And any questions, please feel free. Thank you, uh, Fraser. Uh, yes. Sorry. Yes. Uh, very interesting. Um, you seem to be using CFD as your main tool. Um, were you? Were you? Are you doing any any physical modelling or other things so that you can triangulate and uh, uh, be really sure that CFD is giving you the right answer? And how confident are you in the CFD theory? And you, and, you know. Does it have, do you have, are, you, are you tweaking it from experience? Uh, we're not tweaking it. Um, this method has not been compared to actual measurements because the vessel has not been built yet. Um, all the components which I showed you, the way to capture the water surface, the rotation of the grid to accommodate uh, the pitch of the, the foils, um, they all have been separately tested in different uh, applications. If you go to our website, you will see that there's a beautiful comparison of vessel uh, moving in waves. We did the same computation. Uh, we did the same thing in a towing tank, and it fits. So use we use towing tanks as well for, well, n not just for this one. It's uh, budget limited, of course. Um, and towing tank is fairly costly compared to these kind of studies. Um, so each component has been compared um, the whole picture, not yet. But I hope so that I get the data when the vessel has been built by the team. So that's uh, definitely the next step. Okay, for the first question, how was the configuration chosen? Um, it was done in early design, uh, in early phase of design process by the team that's actually uh, raising and building the vessel. We were asked to do this study, um, <coughs> so I would have to refer to the, them uh, for, to answer this question. Um, but I have seen there are many configurations. I think there's one even now in using only two uh, foils, a uh, small strut forward and a uh, small foil aft. Um, so there's definitely a lot of options. Um, 
Then your second question, how to choose the uh, parameters. Um, good question, because uh, I think this was probably a second try. I did one computation uh, with a different set of parameters, um, where I found it to be, um, well, just falling out of the water. It wasn't dampened enough, so it did an overshoot bigger than the error it had to correct, um, leading to a, uh, well, in real life physics, a, non a situation you don't want to have, and in computational uh, situation, a computation that didn't proceed, it just crashed. Um, so I, I reduced those parameters. It was the, basically the second guess, and that's one of the things we should uh, improve. It's, uh, here a method is introduced, and the improvement of the results of the performance of the vessel is the next step. I think there, there's a question. How much the adaptive grip refinement affect the computational cost of the analysis? Not too much, actually. Um, you always have to resolve the free surface. You always have to have a small cells near, near the water surface. Um, in this case, in the initial mesh, in the initial grid, we didn't have small cells at the free surface. So we, the first few steps we only did to uh, allow the adaptive grid refinement to refine at the free surface, and then it just moves to the free surface. So it's not a lot more costly than um, uh, ordinary computation. And what might be interesting to know as well is that the, the adaptive grid refinement also uh, coarsens the cells that are not in the free surface region uh, anymore. So if, uh, let's go quickly to the slide. Well, um, <coughs> at some point in time, the free service would have been here, but the cells here are, uh, have been coarsened again, so the, the refinement has been t taken away, um, so there's not more cells than strictly necessary to uh, detect the, the, the water surface. <coughs> 